Hey, good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> this morning is a really important presentation. Um, I don't think it's something we talk about enough. And um, I would like to introduce Scott Medlin. He's our presenter today. Um, he's a United States Marine Corps veteran who went on into a career of nearly 15 years in law enforcement. In 2020, Scott began his journey to inspire and encourage first responders and other emergency personnel to focus on their well-being to not only do well on the job, but to create a fulfilled life. Um, Scott has spoken openly about his struggles with post-traumatic stress disorder, addiction, and depression. And Scott is a relatable and dynamic speaker. Sorry about that. Um, he's an author, content creator, and has presented at numerous first responder conferences. His work has also been featured on major first responder platforms, top-ranked um, police podcasts, and so much more. You can follow Scott on his YouTube channel, The Code 10 Mindset. I'm going to find that and link it in the chat also. Um, Scott, over to you. No audio. There we go. Can everyone see or hear me? Please type one in the chat if you can. Be very helpful, just to make sure. There's one, okay, so just one person hears me? One, one, all right, thank you very much. All righty, thank you, Amy, thank you, Wayland, thank you, Earl. Okay, great, I'm going to get started. Yes, once again, my name is Scott Medlin, I'm with LEO Motivation LLC, and I want to get real with you real fast, because you're probably wondering, why the heck is this guy so focused on mindset, and a lot of people are really feeling the, the push for mindset, wellness, resiliency. I can tell you why it's important, and let me share my screen and I'll prove it to you right here. So why mindset? Because at least 15 million adults in the USA are suffering from depression. Now, when you go to the CDC website, you're going to see that that is, is the equi equatable to 4.7% or something like that. So your mind, in an effort to protect you, as it always is doing, is probably going to be thinking, oh, you know what, that's a 96% chance that I won't ever get depression. But that's 15 million people. Denial and complacency is not how we can go about anything. Because I can tell you when, when I battled depression, I didn't once think, Today's the day, <laughs> or I didn't once think, oh, I better be careful, I might get depression. No, it, it, was after, it was after faltering relationships, starting to feeling hopeless, not getting out of bed. That's when I started realizing, oh shoot, I'm bothered by something and it is really affecting me in a bad way. But the stats don't stop there regarding people here in America and the emergency responder world in, in general, where we do have an issue where firefighters and police officers are more likely to die by suicide than in the line of duty. 18 to 24% of dispatchers battle post-traumatic stress injury. I mean, think about it. Call centers for, for emergency relief services, 911 operators, all, all these people, they don't get phone calls from people saying, what a great day they're having. They have to hear people give devastating news or frantically crying for help. And time after time hearing this over and over again, it can affect their mental well being if they're not actively coping against it. And then this is a general population statistic that approximately 70% of adults in the US have been exposed to a traumatic event. And all it takes is one to throw you on an emotional roller coaster because of how you reacted to it. So you take those of us in the emergency management field or emergency response field, you're more likely to go through more than one traumatic event. 
Once again, denial, complacency is not a way that we can deal with this. And on and and in 2020, this is a pretty staggering statistic that suicide was the top nine in in the top nine leading causes of death in the U.S. So I'm not here to bring you doom and gloom. <laughs> I am here to be real with you, and just say that I believed that I was fine for the longest time. And I, no matter what I was exposed to on the job, I would say I'm fine, and I believed it. So I just have to throw the disclaimer out here before I get started that I'm not a doctor and this course will be for informational and educational purposes only. But I come to you as someone who has actually said in the introduction, battled depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and I had to battle and overcome an addiction as well. I never thought I was going to go through that stuff. And if you've battled that on your own, you know where I'm coming from, that there can be hope. If you're thinking to yourself, Scott, I'm good. What? Why all the doom and gloom? You never know how life is going to affect you. Life hits all of us, and we know this. A lot of you attending this call have more experience in life than I do. I'm not calling you old, just saying you have more experience. But you know that life can hit you, and if we don't work on our mindset, it not only makes life hit us that much harder and knocks us down, it takes us longer to get back up, but we have an obligation to the public. When they call because of an emergency that's happened, whether it be in the workplace or whether it's a, a, a flood or a train derailment, wherever, we have to show up mentally and we have to be in good, we have to be in good enough spirits to show up as our best selves. And it's up to us to not accept I'm fine, I would challenge you to accept the mentality of how can I be better today than what I was yesterday? And if you do find yourself battling a mental health issue like I have before, then do not give up. And I'm going to dive into solutions today as how you can maximize your mindset. And I'm speaking from experience on these as well as good research because I wrote my first book, Mental Health Fight, of the Heroes in Blue back in 2020. And the reason why I wrote it was because I was 12, 13 years on the job at that point, back in 2020. But unfortunately, that is when I realized for the first time, and that's when I learned for the first time, that more police were dying by suicide than in the line of duty. Now, the, the suicide epidemic, I guess you could say, it's it's nothing new, but I was enraged that all the mental health battles I had faced, I, I was not taught about the severity of the, of, of the toll the job could take. And this obviously goes for way more than just policing. This goes for emergency management, emergency response, those who respond to adverse conditions. Our mental health is something we have to address. There's that, that pause right there. But we, but we have to stop depicting ourselves as just these people who, who fear no evil and know no pain. We have to understand that we are human and we will make mistakes. We will feel fear. We will have emotions that don't do well for us. We will have memories that stir up bad emotions. And unfortunately, it can lead to some self-harming behaviors. We have to acknowledge that we are human. Like I said, we are human. Please acknowledge it. Acknowledgement, awareness, and action. I'm gonna hammer those home today. Because what is mindset? Mindset, I mean, at least the formal definition, is an established set of attitudes held by someone. Here's the good news. It, it's not permanent. So if you are very disgruntled right now, there, is, there are things you can do to work your way out of it. Speaking from experience. 
And I'm all about good quotes as well. And one of the quotes that I like when it comes to mindset is by Dr. Steve Maraboli. He said, once your mindset changes, everything on the outside will change along with it. Now, this might sound cliche or, yeah, okay, whatever, to some of you. It might. But someone like Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor, was able to talk after the Holocaust about how much his mindset helped him survive that ordeal. So if someone in that dire of a, of a situation over a few years can, can find a mindset to get through it, I, I promise you, you can work on your mindset to help you as much as you need possible. Because I'm speaking from experience on that. And once again, I never thought I would just, I never thought all those mental health issues that happened, I never thought they would happen to me. That's where I went wrong. I was complacent, I was in denial, and then bam, it hit. So don't ever underestimate your mindset. Next quote I like is, happiness depends on your mindset and attitude. A lot of times we fall in this trap of, I'll be happy when I get a pay raise. I'll be happy when I get reassigned. I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when. And then when we get that external factor, whether it be the pay raise or the reassignment or whatever it is. Like I remember one time I said to myself, I'll be happy when I get a new patrol car. Well, guess what? I got a new patrol car. It only had 28 miles on it. And then I was complaining about something else. It's because I was not actively working on my mindset and external factors were what I believed at the time determining my happiness. It's not a good way to be. So happiness can depend on your mindset and attitude, just like Roy T. Bennett says. Pardon me right quick. All right. So we have to acknowledge what work experiences we might encounter that actually do damage our mindset. Because we can never just think about a traumatic encounter as just an ordinary day on the job. We can't. And unfortunately, the more we respond to these things, sometimes we build up this wall where we get numb to it. Therefore, we think we're getting used to it, but it's not something our brains are innately wired to see at all. That's what I didn't know. And that's what I wish would have been taught to me when I first started in law enforcement. You have to think about these things interacting with numerous victims who have lost a lot. And you'll hear them sometimes say, I've lost everything. And then, and unless you're just, I mean, I'll be honest with you, unless you're just a psychopath, it, it hurts to hear someone say that. But it generates emotions and it can generate negative reactions in you as well. I'm not saying feel bad for feeling bad for these people. Absolutely not. What I'm saying, it's severe and should never be undermined at all. Seeing death and destruction, that was one of the things that always bothered me on the job. But of course, I was that tough cop. I had to bury it. I couldn't tell anyone. I couldn't be honest with myself. Sometimes I would get mad that I was even affected by it or upset by it. And then particularly for first responders, there are those situations where your life is on the line and you're body is so thrown out of equilibrium with the stress reaction that more times than not, you're in the fight, flight, or freeze mode. And your body's having to work through it, through these stressful conditions. These are traumatic encounters. They should never be looked at as just an ordinary day on the job. Even though they might be ordinary events that regularly happen, whatever it is in your particular job field, I don't want you to undermine the effect it can take on you. And yes, you're going to hear me say some of the same things over and over again. That's okay, in my opinion, because it's repetition. It's more likely that you'll remember it once this class is done. But I think I've been very serious lately. I promise I will get the solutions. But I, I'm, I'm also not only about good quotes, as I've shared earlier. I like to share memes. Now, this is about uh, policing. However, I think it can apply to other career career fields. I, I uh. That's one of my favorite memes. And, and I, I, I always get concerned one day, I'm actually gonna run into this person who's pictured and he's gonna be like, hey, why are you using me? But anyway, 
I think that's a pretty good meme. But it, it's it's true. Our jobs, particularly in the emergency management, can age us so fast if we're not careful and work on our mindset and take care of uh, of not being adversely affected by the stress, demands, and trauma of the job. And the thing is, even if you believe you're okay, I want you to understand we are connected head to toe. On the surface, you're like, duh, we, I know that. But one of the best quotes I heard regarding this was strong body, strong mind, strong mind, strong body. When we are in pain physically, it can affect us up here. When we are in pain here, it can affect us down here. And that should never be underestimated either. Sorry about that. So how do we cope and how do we grow and how do we overcome? Well, it all starts in the mind. And the thing is, you, you might be at a place where you're thinking I'm being overly optimistic. Let me assure you, I've been to the lowest of lows mentally and it's not fun. I mean, I got disgruntled so much one time by a negative group of coworkers that I quit my job and went to another department. I get it. What I'm being, what I'm talking to you about is real. And the good thing is you had the ability to change your mindset. And the thing is for life, we have to continuously change it, not just for the career, because eventually you're going to be away from this career field. And this stuff can help you outside of the career and in your life. And I'm proof of it. If you would have told me two years ago, hey, Scott, you're going to write four books and you're going to be talking to people across the country about this stuff. I would have committed you to the hospital because I thought you would have gone crazy. But when you start working on mindset, incredible things can happen. And you'll start looking at things a lot differently. And the good thing is your brain has this piece of equipment in, you, in, in it that, that was issued to you at birth. And you know what it's called? It's called the reticular activating system. Now you might be wondering, who the heck is that guy? That is Ed Milet. And if you don't know who Ed Milet is, I, I understand he's, he's not exactly a celebrity, uh, but he is, he is pretty famous within his circle about uh, self-help and entrepreneurship. And Ed taught me about that title right up there, the reticular activating system. Now, even if you cannot remember the term, please remember, like, don't, don't worry about the term. Just remember the fact that your brain has a filter to it. And I'm going to play a snippet from a video that is on Ed Milet's YouTube channel that after the presentation today, I highly recommend you go watch the whole video. But he's going to talk about the reticular activating and uh, reticular activating system. And then I will bring it around full circle as to how it relates to us in the emergency management response. And this is that awkward pause where I hope the video works. And so, uh, let me see here. All right, I'm going to bring up the chat and make sure. All of you could hear that. So please give me a moment to find the chat because uh, I want to make sure you can hear it. And all I'm seeing is, Ashley, can you see the chat? It, could everyone hear that? Okay, so I can see the chat. I typed in there. I heard it, but it was like very, very, very quiet. Okay, let me stop sharing audio, right quick. And, the audio yeah, was working. Okay, all right, let me stop sharing and I will... Uh, I forgot to probably forgot to click share computer audio. All right, there we are. Sorry about that, everybody. You know, you know, this stuff happens. Particularly uh, virtually. I was literally right. double muted for like five minutes last week and didn't realize it. So you're fine. <laughs> if anything, you got a good laugh out of it. All righty. And it's the filter that we see the entire world through. Okay, could, I still can't see the chat. Was that okay? All right, thumbs yep. up. All right, good to go. Good, good to go. All righty. I talk about it a great deal in my book, Max Out Your Life. You can click the link here. There's a little bit of the description in the bio as well, or go to Max.
Oh, sorry. It's out book.com. You can get the book or go to Amazon. But I talk about this in the book. The reticular activating system is the filter through which you see the entire world. It's powerful. And so that's why it filters out all the things in your life that aren't important to you so that you can be sane. You don't feel the blood rushing through your left ear. You don't, you know, you don't, you're not conscious of your breathing. A million stimulus would hit you. If you couldn't filter things out, you'd go crazy. This allows you to only filter into your consciousness what is most important to you. And what's most important to you is what you think about all the time. And it creates a filter. For example, that's why if something's important to you, the reticular activator reveals it to you through vision, sound, touch, you name it. And so, for example, you ever buy a new car? You've got a new, uh, you know, blue Honda car. All of a sudden, don't you see that car everywhere? It's on the third, it could be three lanes over, other side of the freeway, you see blue Hondas all of a sudden everywhere. They were already all over the road. Why do you see them all of a sudden? You ever notice that before? Because that's become important to you because it's, it's part of your reticular activating system now. So what if you could pro- All right. I won't complicate it. Any, I mean, I could talk about neurons and neurotransmitters and the way our brain talks. I'm just going to confuse myself and, and probably most of you. But just remember, your brain has a filter complex of neurons, and it determines what's important to you, just like Mr. Milet said. So if you're seeking ways, even if you're not aware of it, if, if you're seeking out how your, your boss can make you upset today, it's going to be, you're going to be aware of that. If, if you seek out a negative environment, you're always looking for the negative, you can, your, your reticular activating system will, will, will filter in all the sensory information that points out the negative, and you'll forget about the positive. This filter, this reticular activating system, it can work for you or it can work against you. And obviously, I encourage you to have it work for you. So it's all the more important to seek out a positive environment. And if you're not in a positive environment at work, then you, by gosh, better work hard on seeking out positive outside of work. But even then, you can work on your mindset when you're at work, no matter what you're responding to. And the reticular activating system is there for you. And the thing is, your brain has the ability to change. Because I learned about this really big word when I was writing my first book, neuroplasticity. And I'm sorry, you can't see it, but neuroplasticity. And one of the big root words in there is plastic. Because when plastic is thin, we can bend it. When plastic needs to be formed to be malleable, it, it's heated up and, and it can be malleable, it can change. I'm not saying your brain's gonna physically change shape. What I'm, going, what I'm saying is it has the ability to modify its wiring. Incredible stuff, it really is. It, it, it's adaptable. And the thing is, what I didn't know until I got home from Iraq was that when we go through stressful and or traumatic incidents, our brains take a snapshot of the incident. And this is all done to protect you. And it will play things over and over and over again so that it can, it can make logic of it. And the thing is, you know some of the things you have seen, particularly if you've responded to these scenes of emergencies where some of it will never make sense. Like, it's just disastrous, and there's no logic behind it. And what's concerning is that you can relive this over and over and over again. That's why you hear that a lot of veterans that come home from combat zones are physically home, but mentally they're still there. It happened to me. It happened to me when I was working in law enforcement. I would come home, but I wasn't present to my family. I was still thinking about the horrific scenes that I had been to. And the thing is, when you relive this, you have a thought. And that thought, particularly when you're reliving it, generates a physiological reaction that can lead to emotions. And they're not positive emotions. And your negative emotions lead to your actions, and they can lead to bad results, such as drinking and other self-harming behaviors. So once again, because your brain takes a snapshot, and then it freezes those, the, the neurons that fire together, wire together, and you see these images, or you relive a stressful moment, 
The thought leads to an emotion, and emotion can lead to action, and actions can lead to results that aren't good. But because your brain has the ability through neuroplasticity to rewire itself through with your, with your conscience effort to do it, you don't have to be stuck thinking about moments that occurred in the past and have those emotions from past events. You can start to think about where you want to be in life in 15 years, or you can start to think about your family, whatever the case is, that generate positive emotions through thought. And when it comes to specific traumatic incidents, say, you know what, I'll use food poisoning as an example. If you've had food poisoning before, you remember the food that gave you that food poisoning. And the chances are is you haven't had it since because you think about it and it generates that emotion from the time that you had the, the poisoning. Say it's sushi. Well, you're obviously going to think about all the emotions, like, like the feeling of what that sushi did to you. But say you go out with friends and they go to a sushi bar. You're like, I'm not having sushi. And they're like, oh, come on, just, just try it without fish. You try it without fish. Boom, your brain is already through the process of neuroplasticity because you didn't get sick. And you start to associate that, that sushi with not being a bad experience. Now, this is obviously not an overnight fix. It takes time. It takes time. But my thing is, speaking from experience, and knowing many other people in the emergency field, we can relive incidents and remember thoughts have emotions and you can essentially fire off, fire off stress chemicals because of a thought. If you wanna learn more about neuroplasticity, I highly recommend Dr. Joe Dispenza. Very dynamic and, it taught, and he taught me a lot. But the thing is, remember how I said it was an overnight process? Addressing your mindset is an active process, but you can overcome the trauma. You can do this and you can manage symptoms. It's just that a new set of neurons need to be arranged in your mind. So we have the strategies, we have the techniques. And if I had more time, I would go over every single one of them possible, but I'm going to go over some that have really helped me help many others through studies. And I wrote about them in my book or my wrote about a lot of them in my books. But you have to understand this, none of it works. None of it works if you don't have the persistence, the discipline and determination. You have to keep showing up for yourself because things like alcohol, where people think they're coping with it by drinking, that's an immediate effect. The things I'm about to go over are not an overnight process by any means, but they're worth it. And through persistence, discipline, and determination, you can start to escape from the negative emotions because of memories from the past. And you can start to forge ahead with a new mindset. And I'm not saying you're always gonna be happy and everything's gonna be great. No, you're human, we, we are human. There's going to be ups and downs. But the thing is you have the mindset to keep going. And also a lot of what I talk about coming up is in my second book, 101 Health Tips for Police Officers, which obviously there's not, these tips are not just for cops. I mean, they're health tips. I just let the police officers know about it. But it's very important. We have the acknowledgement, we have the awareness overall in the, in the career field where it's no secret anymore that mental resilience and mental health can be a challenge. But what about solutions? This is where it's really important solutions. So the first thing we're going to do, and yes, I said do, because I'm not just going to talk about it. You and I are going to do it. It's a call to action. And this call to action is to write down five things you are grateful for. Now don't start yet. If, if you don't have a pen and paper, please go get it. But I also wanted to let you know, that the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because this is the method that started my road to recovery, getting out of depression. And the thing is, you don't, this, I'm not saying you have to be in depression for this to work. Being in a state of gratitude 
is one of the most common denominators I hear from studying people who are really experts in the self-help field. The Tony Robbins, the Les Browns, Eric Thomas, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Mel Robbins, all these people, you look them up, they will all talk about gratitude. And when I was being treated for depression for several months, I just kept talking about the negative things that were going on and it was totally drowning me out from all the positive that I had in my life. Once again, thoughts generate emotions and emotions create actions and habits that don't do well for you. And the psychologist said, Scott, you've been coming to me for a while. I can only do so much for you. You're gonna have to be the one to change your mindset. And I sat up like, oh, he's being real with me right now. And he said, I'm not sure you're ready for this change, but I'm going to tell you to do this. And we're going to see what happens. And he told me to do this at the end of every day, write down five things you are grateful for. And you have to write complete sentences and you have to write them down. You can't just think about them. You have to write them down because it's actually etching in etching it into your mind a lot more. And you write down, I am grateful for whatever it is. But you feel the gratitude. It's easy for me to say, I'm grateful for food, I'm grateful for my family, I'm grateful for the sun, I'm grateful for gr grass in my backyard, it looks pretty. No, 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 feel it. Like with me, I am grateful for every time I look into my son's eyes and they smile at me. I feel like the wealthiest man alive. That's gratitude. So for two minutes, we're going to write down, I'll, I will do it with you because this, this exercise is so good. You can do it anytime, no matter what mental state you're in. We're going to do it for two minutes and I do have some music that will play with it. It helps to elevate the mood. If you don't like the music, just press, press mute. But we're going to do this exercise for two minutes. And feel the gratitude. And <laughs> one other thing, sorry. If, if you write down five things and we're still going, then continue to write. Really think about what you have to be grateful for. I've talked enough, let's get going. Pens down and pass your papers to the left for grading. I'm just kidding. Let's move on. I really encourage you to do that exercise each and every day. Uh, it's kind of like working out. Sometimes you fall off and you, and you get slack with it, but you can always come right back to it. I'm speaking from experience. And so, so moving on with more solutions. I talked about gratitude. 
And I talked about how you can become addicted to essentially the trauma from the past or bad experiences from the past and creates negative thoughts, negative emotions. This is one way for that neuroplasticity word to start coming into effect in your life a lot more quicker. And, that, and this is meditation. I wish I could see the chat. I'm sorry, I don't know how to bring up the chat. But for those of you who, if, if you do meditate, I'm sure you can vouch for me that it, it can be life-changing. I was presenting in California not too long ago in person at a police department and an officer in the back, she was tired because she had worked the previous night, but she told, she spoke about, she spoke up about meditation and how it changed her life. Now, I've, I'm not saying this is a one size fits all. Some people, it absolutely does not help. However, if you haven't tried it, don't knock it because you don't want to be like me. I bashed it for the longest time. I did. It's like, I don't have time for this. What, what do you think the other cops are going to think of me if they hear I'm meditating? What in the world? But then I started doing it. And once again, not an overnight thing. But then I started to picture what I wanted to do and actually started to get the drive to work on goals that were always in the back of my mind. But there wasn't enough clarity to start working on them. And that's one of the biggest things that we lack in our lives sometimes is clarity. We know, what, we, we know we're upset, but we don't know why. We know things need to change with certain things, whatever it may be, life or in career, but we don't know how to change them. Meditation can help you to start to visualize and gain clarity. But that's not it. When it comes to working in the emergency management or emergency, these benefits right here obviously help us a lot, particularly the first one, relieve stress. We are in a stressful career. Well, I don't, I don't work in it anymore, but for years I, I was in a stressful career, in a career field. You are in it. You might as well take the time to settle your mind down because it does, it can do all these things for you. It really is incredible. And speaking about strengthening the mind, there's reading. Now, a lot of people don't read as much as they should. I'm not talking about reading social media. I'm not talking about reading the headlines. But when you read inspirational material, particularly first thing when you wake up or within the first few minutes of waking up, guess what? Your mind is in a more moldable state. And if you read inspirational and, in, and inspirational and motivational stuff, your, your brain's more adaptable to stressors because of the inspiration it was fed in the very beginning because of reading. And what exercise does for your body, reading can do for your brain. It's very constructive. And the thing is, I'm not telling you to read an hour, hour and a half each day. I'm not telling you to meditate for an hour, hour and a half. Heck no. Start with a minute in meditation. Start with a page, with a book, but act. Acknowledge your human, have the awareness of why you need to work on your mindset, and then action. Small steps lead to big results over time. And building our mind is important, and I'm sure you saw this next one coming from a mile away, but the reason I bring up exercise is because not only is it something that helps our bodies, it helps our minds. And that's one thing I can tell you when I've battled depression or the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, I can tell you right now, exercise helps your mind because it releases endorphins. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard about endorphins. Endorphins are, quote, nature's feel-good drugs. But exercise helps to release chemicals that the medicines people take for depression can trigger the body to release. Like exercise can do the same thing. Tony Robbins says, in order to change your emotional state, it all starts with your physiology, the way you move your body. And once again, I'm not saying you need to go work out for an hour, hour and a half. Heck, if you've fallen off the bandwagon, you don't work out as much as you should, you know, obviously, I encourage you to get back into it. But the thing is, go into the gym, stay for five minutes, and then get out of there. 
Don't hire some CrossFit trainer who's going to burn you out. And no, I'm not knocking CrossFit. You get my point. I'm just saying like an intense workout because you're going to get sore, you're going to be miserable, and you're less likely to go back in there. If you're like me and you don't have the time or the, the money necessarily to uh, uh, budget towards a gym membership because prices are high right now, then work out at home. And you don't have to do it I mean, the most I work out is 30 to 45 minutes. Don't get me wrong, I'm getting it, but, but exercise. Start slow. So we've, we've talked about reading, we've talked about meditation. Next thing is something that can help your body and your mind immensely. And it's another thing, like meditation, that I bashed for the longest time. I said, there's no way I'm going to do this. I'm on YouTube. I'm on record saying that I thought it was for sissies. I'm sorry. I was like, that's what, no, I'm a big bad cop. I can't be doing yoga. But started doing it because I was sick and tired of being stiff. I was in my early 30s wearing a police uniform in pain and discomfort. And my wife just kept saying, do yoga. Come on, shut up, do some yoga. So I started doing it. Wow, let me tell you. It promotes your body's ability to heal itself. Which in my opinion, if you start healing and you feel more useful because of stretching, then guess what? You might be able to get off some pain meds that have their own side effects. That's all I'm going to say about that. But as my yoga coach, Sean Veig says, where there's flexibility, there's youth. You can start to feel younger when you are more flexible but it also improves your strength and your lung capacity and much, much more. Many of bodybuilders, I know two in particular, have gone into a power yoga class and they couldn't even work out the whole time in a the class. They just, they gassed out. It's not a joke. I mean, it's, it is good exercise, but also the mental health benefits can really help to bring down the stress levels and it can help our immune system. So I encourage you, if you haven't been doing yoga, even if you don't want to do the exercising, consider the stretching. Because remember, we are connected from head to toe. And when you start to feel better physically, you free up more space in your mind and not focus on the pain you have. And it can help your mindset and it can help build up your body as well. So I've talked about meditation talked about reading, talked about exercising, talked about yoga. All these things that you can increase your time in, or if you already do them, you know you can always work on perfecting it and diving more in. But the next thing I'm going to talk about is something we all are aware of, but are we really serious about taking action on? And I'm not asking you to increase it at all. And that's electronics. Unchecked use of electronics can harm our mental health so much because it can get us used to an instant dopamine fix. When we check social media first thing in the morning after waking up, rather than reading motivational material, it can start to mess with us mentally. And before you know it, you might start running late to work because you ran out of time because the electronics just sucked you in. And yes, I'm speaking from experience on this. Yes, I have to be aware of this stuff. Absolutely. I'm not perfect. We're, we're, we have to hold each other accountable. But I can tell you this, nighttime use of electronics can absolutely affect your sleep in a bad way. It can deplete the, the body's maximum capability of producing melatonin, which triggers sleep. And obviously, that can lead to ensuing health problems because you haven't been getting optimal sleep. And I already covered how checking your phone first thing in the morning is not a good thing. Are there times when I get too distracted on my phone? Absolutely. You can ask my wife. She'll tell you. My son even says, Daddy, get off your phone. I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you for telling me. But one thing I've been good about, one thing that I noticed helped me get out of the, the um, bad symptoms of post-traumatic stress, was not checking my phone for the first hour after waking up. 
It's too much of a distraction. It's too tempting to check social media or the news. And it can also be very time consuming. When you wake up, that is time to build your mind, not tear it down and then go into a job where there could be a toxic work environment or obviously you respond to incidents that are full of negativity and downright trauma at certain times. So watch the use of electronics, obviously. And the next thing I wanna say is we have to be mindful of positive people in our life. We have to be mindful of negative people too. But I've already told you how I quit after my first year as a cop because I was around some negative coworkers and I went to a different department. What I'm saying is, I know you can't get rid of all the negative people in your life. You have to either either work with them or, or cause I, I'm, I'm being real with you. It's, it's in the workplace a lot, unfortunately. And I was one of those too. I would complain or I would gossip. Come on, not a saint, but it's better to be mindful about it and do something about it and change than to be totally oblivious and get sucked into the negativity. So surround yourself with positive. One good quote I heard was, if you're the smartest person in your group, it's time to find a different group. I'm not saying be mean to these people and cast them out, but surround yourself with people who only build you up because that's what life's about, building ourselves up, continuously seeking to grow because we're never going to be perfect at work and in our lives. So be mindful of this. And yeah, I can tell you when I came back to the department, I, I was allowed to come back after an hour and a half oral board where they chewed me out and I fully deserved it. I, I would get around negative officers and I would drive away or I would walk away. I was very mindful of it. Fortunately, unfortunately, I mean, I had to learn the hard way. Don't make the same mistake I did. But you can also neg uh, influence negative coworkers into maybe seeing more of the positive. Possibly not through directly telling them, hey, you're negative. You need to work on your attitude. No, that's not going to work. But when they see that you are refusing to get sucked into the negativity and they see how you are working and you are living your life outside of work because you value positive people and positive energy and, hey. and, and positivity. Can you hear me? Then that can change them. Oops. Hold on. But just as much as it's can important. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hey, if you're on the call, could you please mute yourself? I do. Oh. Alrighty. No, no problem. No problem. All right. Uh, so we have to be aware of positive people around us. We also have to be aware of how we talk about ourselves. And we have to be careful of our own words because self-talk and mindset are critical for our, for our, uh, our health as well. Now, if we were in person, I would ask one of you to come to the front of the room, and I do this at all my presentations. I would have you stand up, face the room, and, and put your feet side by side with your hands down by your side. And no, it's not for sobriety tests. But I always have the person raise their arm out to the side. And then I have them complain and talk negative about themselves. And I stand behind them. And I give them about 10 seconds to complain and talk negative. And then I tell them, resist me pushing your arm down. And I start to push their arm down. And most of the time, it's no problem at all. There was one strong bodybuilder. I had to use a little bit more muscle, but I still got his shoulder down. So they see, okay, you, you push my arm down with no problem. Then I say, all right, next, talk positive. Be grateful. And they start talking positive and they start talking gratitude. Arm goes back out. I can't push their arm down. I can't, I kid you not. What you say affects your body as well. So we have to be careful of our language. And also this one, this one, a lot of people feel attacked when I, when I bring this one up. When you're constantly talking about retirement, you can start to sound like prisoners do. I've got 10 years left, I've got 15 years left, and you start to focus on something you don't have, and it can unfortunately put you in this mentality where that's all you're focused on is something you don't have, 
and you're naive to what's around you that is great. Please don't be this way. I, I know it's, it's I'm, I'm getting very real with that. But it is a form of, of negative self-talk. Not saying you can't be excited about retirement if it's coming close, but please don't get in a negative mindset about it because, I mean, wouldn't it drag on time anyway if you if feel like dragging on time if you're being negative? But I've already made this point that it can impact your physical health because of your mind-body connection. And the next thing I want to mention is, is sleep, obviously. Optimal from all that I've been told through the VA and my research, seven to eight hours of sleep is good, but it really helps with preventing a lot of things, but it helps with renewing as well. You know these things. So, whoop, 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 I went too fast. Uh, you know these things. So let me tell you what has helped me get better sleep. I've already mentioned that you should eliminate cell phone usage before bed or electronics before bed because the um, blue light from the electronics it depletes the body's ability to produce maximum amounts of melatonin needed to get good restful sleep. But also you can change the lighting in your house to red light bulbs. I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds woo woo, but it's true. You can change the lighting to red, a warm shower before bed, have the room at a very cool temperature. I sleep with it around 67 degrees. There's actually mats you can buy that will cool the bed. Deep breathing before bed. And there's a lot of other things, but those have really helped immensely for my sleep. And I encourage you, make the investment for a good bed and a good pillow because you spend a lot of time in your life sleeping and you want to sleep on something quality. The whole saying about, I'll sleep when I'm dead, or I got too much to do to sleep. We need sleep, particularly in the emergency management response field. Uh, we need it. We need it. And one thing we don't need a lot of is media. So, yes, I recommend people go on a media fast. Now, ultimately, the big challenge is to go 30 days without the news. You're like, what? I can't do that. <laughs> Have some, if you want to go the full 30 days, more power to you. In 2018, I did it. And let me tell you, my mind just felt so much more free. But I encourage you to do this. The same thing with meditation, reading, yoga, exercise. Start slow. Go a morning without checking the news. And then go in morning and afternoon. And then go one day. Turn one day into two days. Because we don't get a lot of value in our lives and feel inspired after checking the news. We just don't. And we're already exposed to enough negativity as is. So these are some things you can do to help that mindset. But there's one other thing I have to mention, and that is this identity crisis so many people, particularly in America, face, is that our jobs become who we are, and it is everything about us, particularly in the first responder world. And I'm speaking from experience because I used to say, I am a cop. I wouldn't say, I work at such and such the police department, and here's my assignment. Oh, no, 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 no. I would say, I am. And it became my identity. If you allow your career to define you, it can be a very damaging mentality because one day you will be without the career you're in. Does that mean you're worthless when you're out of it? Heck no, absolutely not. So remember who you are. Never give up. Work on your mindset day in and day out, which can help you, but it also make you be that much better for the public and everyone around you. And, and a big goal in life is to leave the world better than where you found it when, when, you, when our time comes. And that can start with working on your mindset. And last but not least, if you are in a place where you've tried everything, like my whole presentation here, you've like, I've tried all that, it's not working then I encourage you to reach out for professional assistance. And I'm speaking from experience. It felt great to get the care. It did. And in my case, it never affected my job. They never put me on desk duty. It was a confidential matter. I can't speak for every incident, but I'm speaking from experience. It just felt great. Take care of yourself. Work on your mindset. It's worth it. 
all of it. And it's been an honor speaking to you today. Stay healthy, stay great, and do well out there. And if you want to get in touch with me, here's my information. Okay, we can go ahead and open it up for questions. We've got about five minutes. Um, if you have a question for Scott, feel free to come off mute um, or raise your hand. You can type it in the chat box, um, whatever is easiest for you. Yeah, Jennifer, I get it. Uh, probably separating what I do from who I am and the electron. Yeah, the electronics, it, it can suck all of us in and then uh, the, the job thing, it, become a, it can become an identity. If anything, I'm just making you aware about it because once you're aware about something and then you acknowledge it, it's that much easier to take the steps to reassociate uh, who you are and, and base it on what drives you, not necessarily the career you're doing. I hope that helps. Oh, yeah, I can put my information back up. Absolutely. Sorry about that. When I share the screen, I can't see the chat. So, Ashley, you help me out if there's any questions. But I, I challenge you, if there's something I presented on that you haven't been doing, give it a try. Or if you've been doing all everything, keep doing it. We can always seek to grow and be better because we're never going to be perfect. Oh, that, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I saw something come up out of the, let's see here. Uh, Jennifer, besides writing down the things you are grateful for, any other tips to change your focus? There's a ton of free meditation uh, videos on YouTube that helps uh, change my focus. Uh, but I'm going to give a shout out to my friend Quasi Millington. He wrote something called the uh, the Rise Journal. You can look it up on Amazon, and he has you write down not only what you're grateful for, but he has you write down on the page your intention for the day, your acknowledgement of things that you might be struggling in, and it helps you to focus on it, and therefore your implementation of how you're going to either recover from it or become better at something, whatever the case is. So the Rise Journal, I would highly recommend it. Are you saying Rise, like Rise? It, yep, like Rise, yes. Yep, that's it. So that, that can help change your focus. Uh, just one other tool. And if you want to come off mute to share your thoughts or ask Scott a question, please feel free to do so. And if you're having trouble, um, you can raise your hand by using the little icon down there as well, and we can help you unmute. Can you type one in the chat, everyone, if you, if you got something out of this presentation today? I value your feedback. So please, oh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, James. Awesome. Stephanie got a lot out of it. Great. Great. Well, good. Several ones. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Well, I wish everyone the best. I really do. All right. Well, Scott, it looks like everybody has asked their questions. Um, participants, if you come up with a question um, and you want to ask Scott, go ahead and send that to me. I'll put my email address in the chat here. If you want to get with me, I can forward that to him if you have not, um, if you didn't take down his contact information. And there's my email address. Scott, thank you so much for being here today. Like I said at the beginning, this is a very important topic and sometimes uncomfortable to talk about, but it's something that needs to be talked about. It, it needs to be. So I appreciate you sharing with us today and giving us um, tools and resources that we could use to, to help. Absolutely. And if, and if all of that was too much information too fast, then you can go to uh, my website, thescottmedlin.com, and I, and I will give you a, a uh, quick guide for free. Just uh, enter your name and boom, an email, and there you go. And you can stay in touch with me whenever I send out other information that can help. So thescottmedlin.com. Awesome. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great day. All right, you too. Thank you. Thank you.